Hello Beginner Dragons, this is Mr. Van and today is going to be the beginning of the third week. So um, for this week we are going to be combining what we learned from the first week and the second week to make uh, our form and our I don't want any trouble on Thursday. So first we are going to be talking about our physical and mental goal, then we are going to be doing a warm up and then we are going to be doing our whole form. For this week I'm not really trying to get into too much detail, I just want you guys to be able to um, do the form pretty continuous, uh, not really have to think what the next move is. I just want you guys to be able to do the form pretty smoothly without any uh, bumps or hiccups along the way. So um, first we're going to talk about our physical and mental goal. So our physical goal is speed for this month, but for this week specifically it's going to be reaction speed. So uh, if you guys don't know what a reaction is, a reaction is basically um, what comes after something happens. So if, um, if you got scared and someone scared you, um, what most of you guys would probably do is probably scream because you got scared. So that is the reaction. The first thing is you getting scared by whatever happened before. And the second thing is the reaction, which is you screaming. Uh, another thing would be, uh, if any of you guys play basketball, if you uh, miss a shot, the reaction would probably be try and get to the ball. That's also a reaction. Uh, another, uh, another example would probably be something like if uh, you guys were playing catch with your mom or your dad or whoever you play catch with, um, the action would be someone throwing a ball at you or whatever you guys are playing catch with and the reaction would be catching it. So, uh, Basically, reaction speed is how fast you guys do it. So, uh, if you guys have ever gotten a physical check, which is with your doctor, um, when they hit you in the leg and your instinct is to kick out, that's basically testing your reaction speed. It's testing how fast you react to getting hit in the knee or whatever they hit. So, um, if you guys have really slow reaction speed, that's not really good. But if you guys have really fast reaction speed, for that test, that is good. So um, you want to react really fast for a lot of things. Like if you guys are playing basketball, I'm going to go back to that rebound um, example. So if you throw, uh, try and shoot the ball and you miss, you want to get the rebound, which means you want to get the ball back. If you guys are really slow at that, you're not going to get the ball back, which means you won't be able to get more points and you'll probably lose. Um, Another example is from karate. If someone's trying to punch me, and obviously the reaction would probably be get out of the way, or move and block, or move out of the way and parry, or something like that. Um, but if I have a very slow reaction speed, I'm gonna get hit, and then I'm gonna move out of the way, which isn't really good, because they're just gonna keep on hitting me, and I'm gonna move out of the way too late, and I'm gonna get hurt. So you wanna work on getting faster at your reactions. Um, and that could be a multiple, uh, multiple uh, multitude of things. So that would probably be practicing getting out of the way if someone's trying to hit me, uh, or trying to get to the ball faster when I miss a shot, or whatever uh, reaction that you wanna work on. You just gotta practice it, and practice makes better. So, uh, that is what we are working on for speed this week. And our second thing this week is um, perseverance. So if you guys don't know what perseverance is, it's basically never give up. You don't want to give up on whatever you uh, strive to be. So last week we talked about how if you give up on something, you're never going to persevere. You're never going to achieve that goal. So if you guys wanted to learn how to play the guitar or the piano, and you gave up because you were bad the first day, then you'll never be able to play the guitar or the piano. Or if you guys give up after learning one song, you're never gonna be able to play your favorite song. And if you give up on playing your favorite, after playing your favorite song or whatever instrument you guys are playing, uh, you won't be able to play whatever song that you want whenever you want to. It's just gonna be the song that you've practiced. Now we're gonna talk about what this perseverance is for karate. So all of you guys have different belts right now. So you might be dragon white, you might have a white belt, you might have a dragon uh, yellow belt, 
Uh, in the future, you might have dragon orange, dragon uh, blue, dragon green, dragon red, uh, stuff like that. But um, if you don't give up, you're going to eventually get to a point where you might be able to test for your black belt. Um, but that's only if you don't give up. If you give up after you get your first belt, you're not going to get your second belt. If you give up after your second belt, you're not going to get your third belt and stuff like that. So if you give up, you're never going to get your black belt. And that's what a black belt is. A black belt is someone who never gives up learning, at least for crime. So a black belt in karate would be they always want to learn new karate techniques, new forms, new self-defenses, new stuff like that. So uh, if you guys don't know, um, obviously I'm a black belt and uh, I started off as a white belt, as everyone does. And if I gave up after I got my green belt, I wouldn't have learned a lot of the things that I know now. If I gave up after I got my green belt, I would, I mean, after I got my red belt, I wouldn't know uh, a lot of the stuff that I know now. If I gave up after I got my black belt, I wouldn't be teaching you guys right now. I wouldn't know a lot of the things that I know now because, um, like I said, black belt doesn't give up after they get to a certain point. They always want to keep on learning. And that's why if you're a green belt and you don't give up, you're going to learn new stuff. And then when you get your red belt, you're going to learn new stuff. And then when you're a black belt, in this karate school, you learn a different type of art. So you start back at a white belt. And then you have to work your way all the way back to a black belt. So that's what happened to me. I started off as a American Kempo, which is the thing that you're learning now, a white belt. And... I worked my way up and I learned all the forms, all the self-defenses that I needed to learn. And I got my black belt through testing and not giving up. And then after I got my black belt, I started all over again. Now I'm learning Tung Sudo and I started off as a white belt and I learned new forms and new self-defenses and new stuff that I didn't know before. And now I am an apprentice. I am below a uh, black belt. So uh, black belts basically are people that don't give up when they start. And that's what you guys should strive to be. Even if it's not karate. Even if it's, like I said, learning guitar or learning uh, the piano. Um, you shouldn't give up on it. Even if you feel like it's really difficult. Because there's a, there are points in life where things can be difficult. Such as when you um, get in trouble. Sometimes that can be hard. Like if you got your iPad taken away or any electronic device, um, that can be hard because now you have to do your homework. Now you have to read. Now you have to do stuff other than watch YouTube or play video games, um, uh, stuff like that. There's more stuff to do but it's hard for you to get accustomed to that. But you just have to not give up on yourself and you will strive to get better. Such as if you did your homework and stuff like that. So um, that is the moral of the story. The moral of the story is, even if it's not about karate, perseverance is not giving up and you never want to give up even if things get tough. So if you failed your math test, don't give up. You'll learn it eventually. Failed your English class, Keep on going. Stuff like that. So that was really long winded. Uh, I talked for a long time. Um, yeah. So now we're going to do our uh, warm up. So our warm up is going to be pretty simple. Uh, I want to do something about running because outside it's been really nice out lately. Uh, today it's not really nice out. It's more cloudy. But Throughout the week, it was really high 60s, 70s, and uh, really sunny out. So uh, I'm hoping this week is going to be kind of the same way so that you guys can go outside, have some fresh air, uh, have some sunlight, and have some fun running around outside. So 
Uh, I'm gonna do it indoors because if I did it outdoors, it's gonna be really windy and it's really cloudy right now. So you guys won't be able to see me, but uh, inside it's not really windy. So you guys can still hear me and um, it's brighter out. I mean, brighter in here. So um, you guys can also see me. So I'm just gonna explain it and you guys can go outside, have some fun um, while doing this warm. -up. So what we are going to be doing is we're gonna be running around our yard or in my case, running around the room. So let's say this is a fence and this is another fence. I'm just gonna run, touch both fences. So touch the fence, touch the fence, touch the fence again. And then we are going to be doing kicks. So this can be any kick that you guys need to work on. So in your form, there's side kicks. So if you need to practice side kicks, you can practice those. One, two, three, four, five. In your idle line troll, there's front kicks. So you can do front kicks. One, two, three, four, five. Um, if you feel like you need to work on any other kick, I'm probably gonna do a lot of kicks because I haven't done them in a while. But if you guys feel like you want to work on your pizza kick because you haven't done that in three months or whatever, you can practice that. If you want to practice an ax kick because you haven't done it in eight months, you can practice that. Uh, it's all up to you. You guys can practice whatever kick that you guys want to. And then we're gonna run again. Run, touch, touch, touch. Practice whatever kick again, five times. Touch, touch, touch. Practice whatever times. And then we're gonna keep on doing that until we get tired. Um, remember to practice on both legs because if you practice only on one leg, your other leg won't be as good at it than your whatever leg. So um, yeah, I'm gonna stop the video. We're gonna do a time lapse and then we're gonna stretch and then we're gonna do our form. So I'm back from our warm up, and now we are going to be doing our form. So I haven't uh, told you what number the form is, I don't think, since the first month. So we're just gonna do our form and I'm gonna tell you uh, what form number it is now. Um, yeah, so we're gonna combine the first week and the second week, which is basically combining the first month and the second month. And I just want you guys to practice this over and over and over and over again, because I want you guys to get the motion of it so that um, when it comes to stripe test, and you guys have to actually put these two parts together. You won't be struggling on what's the next move. Is this part of the first or second month? Is this uh, part of the first week? Uh, should my toes be pointed this way? No, I don't want you guys to be too hung up on that. I just want you guys to be able to do this really smoothly and just have it all together so that when you guys do go to stripe test, you guys won't be uh, stuck on not knowing the form. You'll know the form, just not all the nitty gritty. So first, we're just gonna do our form. So we get our feet together, dragon form one, you put up one finger, dragon form one. Sir, you get into your left guard stance, which means your left foot is in the front, your right foot is in the back, you have that toe heel line, guard stance. Back fist, twist and punch, turn the foot, front kick, now this part I will stress a lot on because I don't want you guys to get hurt, especially if you guys are practicing this outside. Because if you guys are and you do it wrong, you might hurt yourself and that's not really good. I don't want you guys to get hurt at all. So this part I will stress a lot on. So this, you should pay attention for the details because I don't want to hurt you. First, you hug your head. Then you put your feet together. Then you squat down all the way, sitting onto your butt, making sure that your chin is tucked to your chest. So my chin's not tucked right now. I bring it down so that it's touching my chest the whole time and it's not gonna go anywhere. So after that, I lay onto my side, 
and then I slap the ground near my hip, not up here, right down here near my hip, because if I do it really high up, I might hurt my shoulder and that's not really good, especially if you write with your right hand. So you don't want that to happen. So slap the ground with your right hand, making sure that my chin is tucked to my chest, because if it's not tucked, I'm gonna slam my head onto the ground. And if that happens, it's gonna hurt you really bad. And you don't want that to happen either because then you can't read or you can't look at TV or whatever you want to do. So make sure that your chin is tucked and your head never touches the ground. And that is a side break fall. So you have to pay attention to those details because I don't want you guys to get hurt. So if you guys have to fall on your side, that is the process that you guys are going through. Your butt, then your side, then your uh, arm slaps the ground so that you guys don't hurt your chin, I mean, don't hurt your head, or you don't hurt your shoulder. Making sure that our chin is tucked the whole time so that we don't bounce our head off the ground, which isn't really good. So we're gonna do that one more time. We go into our guard stance, back fist, twist and punch, turn the foot, front kick, bring it all the way back, side break fall. I'm gonna do it to the side so you guys uh, can see what I'm doing. So uh, I'm in my left guard stance, Tuck my chin, hug, fall on my butt, side, slap the ground, making sure that my head never hits the ground. I do a side kick with my left leg. So side kick, keeping my hand up, bring it back. I take a knee. Now I'm gonna move back to the front so you guys can see what I'm doing. So my left knee is up right there. We do cat spa, cat spa. Guard stance, touch, down, twist and punch, front punch, chop. Again, do not focus on the details. I don't want you guys to focus on the details. I just want you guys to be able to go through it pretty smoothly without any um, hiccups or anything of the sort so that you guys know what you're doing and you don't have to stress out on Oh, my toes are pointed this way, but what's the next move? If you guys, if you guys know what I mean. So don't stress out on the little details with your toes or with your positioning. Just focus on, uh, just focus on getting it all together smoothly. Next week we can talk about the little details, uh, but right now I just want you guys to be able to go through it really smoothly so that you guys have. Um, what you need. And that will be the end of the video for today. I will see you guys next time. Bye.